a lot of the pictures that I deal with with sage light are portraits like this one. Now this is a nice picture. It has nice light to it. There are certain things that can be done to it. One of the things that I run across a lot are areas of the eyes that can be brought out. This particular picture is kind of a, what you might call a middle range in that area where a lot of pictures the eyes are even more shadowy. You know, they kind of where they're in our eye sockets and, and they kind of get in the shadows sometimes. Like these eyes, you can see the, the eyes are a little dark, although they look okay. But what we can do here is we can bring them out in a way that looks much better for the picture. So with this picture, what we can do is we can move in to look at the eyes a little bit closer. Some pictures, depending on how big the eyes are in the picture, will need to move in. Uh, other pictures you can just do just by looking at it at the normal size. And then what we can do is we can look at the mask. There's a few options with the masking. What we want here is we want to draw a mask or a vignette. And what we want to do is, is we can see that we have this, this uh, brush here. And what we want to do is we want to get the brush size about the size of the eyes. And then what I can do is I can just paint over the eyes just like this and creating a mask and I don't have to be very accurate you can see that I'm not really worrying about really zooming into the eyes here and I'm not really worried about getting the exact outline of the eyes I'm just doing a really broad stroke and that's one of the things that, that makes this really nice and easy to do so now what we can do is we can leave this here but I think just for the general picture so we can see what's going on we can just move back I'm gonna click this button right here and then what it will do is it will go ahead and put the picture back to you know full screen so we can see it inside the editor and maybe I'll zoom in a little bit just so we can look at the eyes and so with this mask box open what we can do is then we can let me get rid of the uh, histogram and the uh, uh, movies over a little bit over here and so what we can do is then we can use the brightness control in addition to some of these other controls. It depends on really how you want to bring out the eyes. Like here, I brought them out and they look pretty natural. Or what I can do is I can really bring out the highlight brush and then, I'm um, sorry, the highlight slider and then make them a little more contrasty. So it really depends on what you want to do with the picture. Like that looks really nice, really nice and a lot of contrast to the eyes. Or like I said, I can come out here and I can bring these up and make the eyes a little bit brighter with a little less contrast. It really depends on, on what your judgment is. There's no real specific way to do it. They all look pretty good actually. So let me go ahead and go back to the the main uh, view here where I can look at the entire picture and then what I can do is I can continue to go ahead and play with these controls. And you know a lot of times I use the term play with these controls because that's really what I'm doing. There's no real intention as much as I'm just moving the controls to see what I want. I, you know once you get used to the controls you, you, you realize that when you use these bottom controls you tend to get more contrast and then things get brighter when you use these bottom two controls. But you can see that looks pretty natural. Or maybe I'll bring out the brightness a little bit. One of the things I've noticed in a lot of pictures, you know, for every picture that I use an example, I can look at hundreds of uh, samples because, you know, you want to get one that represents what, what you're doing and you want to make sure that um, it's something that you can change easily and, and that sort of thing. And when I looked for pictures for uh, this tutorial, what I saw a lot of was I saw that a lot of people were really bringing out the eyes more and I really didn't even think about that, but it, it is kind of a nice look. So what I can do, for example, is I can really bring out the eyes here and, you know, if you bring them out too much, of course, that just that just doesn't look right. But what you can do is you can say, okay, when you bring them out in kind of a natural way like that, that looks good, but if you go just a little bit, it can really focus in on, on the eyes. And like I said, it's really kind of a, of a personal choice. And you can see that as I move the feather along, let me, let me zoom in a little bit. As I move the feather, you know, I'm really changing things. And this is where, you know, perhaps that if you want to edit the mask, you can subtract just a little bit, you know, if you're really going to go for it. And then that way, as I move the feather now, it, it's really going to adjust the eyes less. And like I said, that's why you don't really need to worry about being completely accurate with your brush strokes because these controls really help you out there. So that's basically the whole tutorial. I'm going to do a couple more things just to continue on the idea of dealing with portraits and the other things that says I can do. But if we look at the before and after on this picture, for example, you can see that the eyes really were kind of in the shadows. So like I said, that's basically, basically the tutorial. So now what I want to do is I want to press apply to apply that. And then what I can do is I can just dismiss this mask here. And then what I'll do is I'll get rid of the histogram in this info window. And this is a good place to show another one of Sage Light's tools. 
In the toolbar, there's this little lion, uh, and what it is is the dodge and burn control. And if you're familiar with the dodge and burn control, especially if you're familiar with it in Adobe uh, or other packages, there's usually a brighten and a darken. What I added with Sage Light was a highlight tool, and it's really good for things like this. It's a very powerful tool, so you want to go very lightly. What happens with dodging and burning is, is that you can often, um, it, ha it kind of creeps up slowly on you, and so sometimes you don't really see what's happening. Um, as you're doing it and so you want to do a little bit in the back and then do the before and after and see what you're doing so what i can do with the highlight tool so i can just go over the face just just a little bit and just uh just run over a little bit and you can see very quickly what i've done is i've just added highlights and with the highlight tool you always want to use an undo brush um what you want to do is you want to press accept it's always going to hit some areas more than you want so if you just did these eyes i'm going to put them back to where they were even though i could have kept them but one of the things that it did too is that you can see that it really kind of blew out this area with the flower. In this particular case, I like it because it puts more focus on her face. And so, as you can see, that very quickly I've been able to really bring up the highlights in her face. And what I did with the eyes is really starting to work out now. So, another thing I can do with this picture since it's a portrait is I can smooth it a little bit. You can see it's a little grainy in there. That's probably because of the original JPEG compression. But you can see in here, there's a little things going on. I think it looks actually looks pretty natural. But what I can do, just just to show that you can do it, is I can go ahead and I can do the uh, skin smoother because it really does work out well on a lot of photographs. This particular picture is just a very smooth skin already. It's probably wearing makeup. You can see, actually see a little bit of the makeup uh, there. And what I can do is I can, since I, with the skin smoother, what I did is I, is I set the skin tone radius. And what that is, is that you just really outline the face. And then what it does, it sets the radius so that you can just bring out the range. And you can see how it smooths the skin. And you know what a lot of people do, you, know, you see this a lot, you know, when you go out on the web and you see videos on this, what they'll do is they'll, they'll do something like that. And what, it'll actually make the picture look fake because it makes it look like she's wearing a lot of makeup. What I like to do is more of a realistic approach where I just do just a little bit and I can set the strength back and then I can... Um, do that and then what I can do this is how you really want to use the uh, the skin smoother is you go to the undo brush and you start with the original and then what you do is you just paint back in certain areas or alternatively what you do is you start with the whole picture and then you just undo areas that have definition like these eyelashes um, you know, the mouth and the nostril area and the, sometimes the hair sometimes leaving the hair a little soft works too but then what it does is it really completes the picture it makes it more realistic because you're leaving sharpened things that need to be sharp and then you're just softening the skin and what that does is that can look pretty good and so you can see just the before and after here just get rid of some of those blemishes it looks still looks pretty natural and on other pictures you can do a lot more work this one didn't really need a lot of work another thing that we can do with this picture is we can bring up the shadows a little bit there are a lot of ways to do that and Sage light. One of the ways that we can do this is with the uh, power box. You know, this is a new thing in version 4. And we can go to the darken area. If you see this video later on, it may be called the super fill area because I'm splitting this darken area out into two different air, um, layers. Because the if you use the darken, usually it means you can darken things. That really was the main purpose. But it turns out that going the opposite direction can really brighten things too. And so just click the lows here which is the shadows and what we can do is we can bring out the shadows and we can use a softer brush or a smaller brush and we can select the range so that we can just really hit these shadows right here and you can see that looks very nice and whether we want to use softer or not it just depends on what the picture looks like and we can feather it just a little bit just to get this area in here and so you can see that it really does help bring out the, the hair these in the shadow here and then I can press apply and then what I want to do is I want to use the undo brush to undo the areas of the face that it hit. You can see it hit that cheek there and everything and that's just the way it is with a lot of functions that they do hit areas that you normally wouldn't want to hit. I mean that's the power of the undo brush is that you can do these changes and then not have to keep them all. And so you can see that it really brought out the hair. I really like the way it brought out this hair area here. If I were to work on this picture a little bit more, I might go back into the Dodge and Burn brush and highlight the hair. But I think this is I think this is fine enough. And in fact, maybe what I can do is really put these shadows back around her face to highlight to kind of frame her face. And so what we have here is we have a picture that's very different than the original picture. 
and the face is brighter and the, the shadows are brought out a little bit and you know the original reason for this tutorial was that the eyes are really just really popping out of this picture <laughs> I shouldn't have said it that way what I really mean to say is, is that they're really highlighted in the picture and I think they really bring you into the picture a lot more than they did uh, so that that's the tutorial and I, I hope you try it out on some of your pictures